Good morning. Uh, welcome to another session on uh, cryptography, network security, and cyber law. Today it is uh, session eight of module three, wherein uh, we will be discussing about IP security, which is uh, trying to provide security at network layer. Now the agenda of today's uh, session will be. Uh, trying to check what happens if we provide security at various layers of the OSI model and we'll just discuss the pros and cons associated with it. Along with that we will be discussing about IPsec um, when it is put into action. Within this we'll discuss about uh, establishing a secure connection between two communicating parties uh, that is with the help of security associations. And also we'll discuss the two protocols that are involved in IP security. One is the authentication header and the other one is the encapsulating security payload. Both of them are referred uh, usually as AH and ESP respectively. And also we will discuss about two modes of operation for IP security. One is the tunnel mode and the other one is the transport mode. And uh, uh, lastly we'll be discussing about the incompatibility of IPsec with uh, NAT. At the end of the session, uh, you will be able to describe uh, security at various uh, layers and also you'll be able to explain um, IPsec associations, protocols that are involved, modes of operation of IPsec, that is the tunnel mode and the transport mode and also we will discuss about NAT incom incompatibility. Now let's uh, understand what we mean by security at different layers. Now we are aware that uh, OSI model has around uh, seven layers and uh, the most important uh, layers uh, that we actually deal with networking are the network layer, the transport layer and the uh, and little bit of application layer. Now the question over here is what if secu uh, security may be implemented at different layers of OSI model? Now why is that we need security at different layers of OSI model? The, the main reason is that when internet was designed it did not include any sort of security. Hence security techniques had to be developed secu uh, separately and then incorporated into various layers. Now the question that arises over here is what layers do we incorporate the security? Now one of the important layer where we incorporate secu uh, security is the network layer and the other one is uh, in between the transport layer and the application layer. We refer to the point between two layers as an interface. An interface is, is something that connects two layers in the OSI model. And the third one is uh, application layer. Now security can be incorporated at application layer as well. Now the question that arises over here is what, if sec what happens if security is involved at the application layer or what happens if the security is uh, involved at the network layer? How does the system actually behave? And also what happens if uh, security is implemented at in between the transport layer and the application layer that is at the interface of transport layer and the application layer. Now let's look at each one of these questions uh, as a separate uh, issues. Now if let me get rid of this. Now if the question if the security is implemented at application layer now obviously this is a very poor choice. Why is it a poor choice because secu because we are incorporating security technique for each of the individual applications. Now if there are 10 applications that are running on your system then each of the application will have a, will need a different uh, security technique which, which, which should be implemented separately and uh, incorporated into that particular application. Now that is not what we need. What we need is we need some generic uh, security technique which can be uh, used for all the applications running on the application layer. Now, now another thing that we need to uh, uh, note, over he, note over here is uh, that users are always unaware of where and how security is provided. 
Now, for example, when we use Gmail or when we use our uh, credit card, hardly we are aware of what uh, security, uh, uh, security algorithms run below it or run beneath it. All that we are, uh, we are uh, happy about is that uh, the application over which we are working is secure enough. Now moving further, the next question that we need to address is what happens if security is implemented at network layer? Now yes, of course, the security when it is implemented at a lower, a lower layer of OSI, the, uh, the first important point is it will not have any influence on specific application or uh, it, it is not application specific. But uh, yes, of course, it requires us to modify or work a little bit on the operating system so that it is compatible with the operating system. And in case of the security, if it is provided at the network layer, application developer just need not worry about uh, having security at various applications. He can just uh, uh, rely upon the network, uh, rely upon the security provided by the network layer for all of his applications. Now, what is the other issue that, uh, now this is an added advantage, but there is obviously a disadvantage associated with that. Now, what is this disadvantage? The system admin who is uh, like helping us get security at the network layer would face a lot of issues with configuration and compatibility. Now, this is about uh, if we provide security at network layer, these are the pros and the cons. Now the third one is what happens if security is implemented in between the application layer and the transport layer. Now obviously we know that uh, an interface exists between transport layer and the application layer or it could be any two layers of the ISO OSI model. Now this interface is helping us connect uh, two layers of uh, this particular protocol suite. Now, what is the advantage of having security at an interface uh, between application layer and the transport layer? Now this uh, interface will help uh, over which the security is implemented will, will provide us with lot of uh, APIs. Now these APIs help the application, devel uh, application developer with the, uh, so many uh, APIs that he is able to develop very, very secure applications. Now, one such example is OpenSSL Suite, which provides us a lot of APIs in order to develop secure applications. Now, OpenSSL uh, Open Suite we'll be discussing in, um, I think, probably in session uh, 10 or something. Now, let's see further what happens. Now, having understood the pros and cons involved in uh, implementing security, uh, either at the network layer or at the application layer or in between the application layer and the transport layer, wherein in case of network layer, the advantage was that the application developer uh, had, ha had nothing to bother about the security of the applications. But yes, of course, the network admin had to worry about working on the compatibility and the configuration issues in order to provide the security. Now, if security was provided at the application layer, the issue was that uh, the application developer had to develop various uh, different security techniques for uh, each of the application. So, for each individual application, there was nothing like generic uh, uh, application security available. Now, this is, an, uh, uh, this is a real uh, uh, drawback uh, associated with providing uh, security at uh, application layer. Now the third possibility was what, wherein we had um, security implemented on a, at an interface in between the application layer and the transport layer. Now this interface helped uh, the developer uh, with, lot, uh, with providing lot of APIs uh, through which he could develop uh, secure applications. Now having understood this, let's move on to the next topic uh, of today's session that is the IP security when it is put into action. 
Now, in this uh, topic, we will uh, we'll be discussing about uh, security associations, that is uh, the secure communication that is established between two communicating entities. Followed by that, we will be discussing about the protocols involved in IP security. One is the authentication header and the other one is encapsulating security payload. Both uh, are referred to as AH and ESP respectively. Then moving further, we have uh, two modes of operation of IP security. One is the tunnel mode and the other one is the transport mode. Now we will see how each of the protocols behaves in the tunnel mode or uh, how it behaves in the transport mode. Then the last topic uh, finally that we will be discussing is incompatibility with that of NAT. Now let's look at each one of these topics in detail. Now IP security was designed uh, in late 1990s and it was uh, uh, mainly developed to fit security into what we call as IP layer uh, or sorry IP protocol. Now this uh, IP security was mainly uh, intended to protect against attacks of sniffing, spoofing, hijacking and denial of service attack. Now what do we mean by sniffing? The, lit the literal uh, meaning of sniffing is to uh, send something, uh, something through the nose. Now let's see what is a sniffing attack. Sniffing means to illegally listen to someone else's conversation. It is uh, like eavesdropping. Now next was spoofing. Spoofing means to pretend to be somebody else. It is impersonation. The third one, uh, third attack which IPsec helps us prevent is hijacking. Hijacking is a type of network security attack in which the attacker takes entire control of communication just like an airplane hijacker who takes control of the flight. Now last one, that we, uh, last attack that, uh, that can be combated with IP security is the DOS attack. DOS refers to as denial of service attack. Now this denial of service attack is an attack in which the perpetrator seeks to make the machine or the network resource completely unavailable so that it, it partially or completely or temporarily disrupts the service. Now you can take an analogous uh, of this particular DOS attack to be a group of people crowding to gain entry into a shop making it hard for the legitimate uh, customers to enter into it and hence disrupt the trade. Now IP security is able to help us protect against such attacks of sniffing, spoofing, hijacking and denial of service attacks. Now IPsec is best known protocol for providing security at the network layer. Now there are two main protocols and uh, two main IPsec protocols, one was the AH and the other one is ESP uh, which, which are uh, mainly used in order to uh, provide security and there are two ways in which they operate either in the tunnel mode or in the transport mode. Now what are the uh, services that are provided uh, by IP security? One is uh, data origin authentication. The receiver upon receiving a message will be able to say that the message has come from a genuine source. That is what we refer to by data origin authentication. And then we have data integrity. Now receiver upon receiving the message will be able to verify the that the message is not altered during transit. The second service that this IPsec is able to provide is protection from replay attack. Now we are all aware of what we mean by a replay attack. Let's say there is an intruder C and the two hosts A and B are communicating. Now what C does over here in this scenario is that he keeps listening to the uh, communication occurring between A and B. Now he uh, makes uh, he captures these this communication that is occurring between A and B and replaces them to B or A 
some time later and pretend that it is actually coming from the other genuine communicating party such an attack we refer to as replay attack now ipsec helps us uh, combat such a replay attack now next uh, service is the data confidentiality service which is provided by ip security now what is this data confidentiality data confidentiality is uh, wherein we are trying to communicate to the other communi uh, to the other party by making the com making the message unintelligible or converting it into a cipher text with the help of an encryption algorithm now this is also supported by ip security now there is another flavor of data confidentiality that is provided by ip security which is called as partial traffic flow confidentiality now in the first case the entire packet is encrypted and sent to the receiver over here in the uh, case of partial traffic flow confidentiality few fields of the header and the uh, payload can be encrypted and sent to the receiver rather than completely uh, rather than the complete packet being encrypted now these are few of the services that are provided by ip security now communication over here uh, we ref uh, by, by communication over here we refer to as communication between two endpoints the protocol considers that communication is either between two hosts or it could be between two gateways or it could be between a host and a gateway now let's move further and try to understand what we mean by security association now before any two communicating parties are able to communicate uh, it could be any of these two hosts two gateways or, or a host and a gateway before they start off with actual communication there will there there is a need to establish secure association between those two parties the node may establish ip security ipsec security association with several other nodes it is not just that i have one security association with the other party i can have multiple security associations with multiple parties now a security association is uniquely identified by a combination of 32 bit security parameter index usually referred to as spi and the ip address of the connection endpoint now what are the various uh, fields that are involved uh, in the security association now the first field that is involved in the security association is the lifetime of the association now the time duration for which this particular association is valid that is specified with the help of lifetime now the second uh, uh, field that is involved in security association is the ipsec mode whether we are using the sec uh, association in transport mode or whether you are using the security association in a tunnel mode is specified with the help of this particular field the third field present in the ipsec uh, security association is the cryptographic parameter now this cryptographic parameters uh, usually specify the algorithm that is used for encryption or it could be for integrity check or it could be the keys that are used for encryption or it could be the keys that are used for integrity check all these parameters are specified in this particular cryptographic parameter field the next uh, field in this security association is the 32 bit sequence number now this 32 bit sequence number is allotted to a security association after the establishment of a security association between two communicating parties now usually the first packet will bear a security uh, sorry will bear a sequence number of 1 and every time a new packet is uh, shared with the other communicating party the sequence number is incremented now the last one is anti replay window now all these five fields are part of security association now let's move further now each node may have many security associations with several nodes 
let's say I am a node and uh, I want to establish a security association with 10 other nodes. Now that is possible. And with each of these 10 nodes, I can have many security associations in turn. Now each security association is uh, already specified that we use an SPI and IP address to say, uh, uniquely identify that particular security association. Because I need to keep track of the various security associations that are established between two users or two communicating parties. Each IPsec packet contains a value of SPI in its header. Now this information is present in the header. Now this information will be used by the receiving node in order to identify a security association that will be used to process the packet. Now what else does a security association have? Now each node over here will have a database of security association. As I told, I am trying to establish a communication with 10 other uh, nodes. Now I need to keep track of all the security associations I have established with the other 10 nodes. Now with the first node I may have 3 associations, with the second node I may have 2 associations and so on. Now what I do is at my endpoint I will have a database. Let's uh, uh, at my node, I will have a database of security associations of all the security associations originating from my point to the other point, and all the associations which are established to with me also that details I will have over here. It is specified clearly security associations for all connections originating from that is from uh, from the node which is residing in me and also terminating at that particular node. Now this database of security associations is referred to as SA database that is the security association database. It is also uh, uh, referred to as SADB. Now another important point to note over here is that now between any two communicating parties you need to have two security associations, one for each way communication. Now if a security association is established between A and B, from A and B, A will be able to communicate with B. B will not be able to revert back to A. Now for B to revert back to A, it has to establish a security, security association from B to A. Only after establishing it, B will be able to communicate with A. Now as already told there are two types of uh, security protocols involved in uh, IP security. Now the protocols that are involved are the authentication header and the encapsulating security payload. The authentication header uh, does not uh, give us uh, confidentiality or does not provide us with confidentiality that is the, it does not incorporate the encryption process. Whereas, uh, uh, Encapsulating security payload is able to provide us with the option of confidentiality. But over here the confidentiality that is provided by ESP is optional. You may or may not use it. Now these protocols can work either in transport mode or the tunnel mode. Let us see what happens if they work in transport mode and the tunnel mode. Now IPsec uh, protocols. Over here we can see that authentication header as an ha ha has an IP header followed by that IP header is the authentication header itself. Now this authentication header is uh, you can see that the details of this authentication header is provided in this diagram. Now then we have a transport header followed by a transport payload. Now authentication is performed over all of these fields. Now what does this authentication header have? It has the information about next header, then information about the length of the payload, there are some bits uh, fields that are unused, there is a uh, SPI 
sequence number and the HMAC that is used. Now we know what is SPI. SPI refers to security parameter index and uh, now this security parameter index helps us uniquely identify a security association. Now this is about uh, authentication header in a transport mode. Now let us see uh, authentication, uh, sorry let us see the ESP header. Now over here we have the e IP header followed by that is the ESP header and after the ESP header is the transport header. Now first we will be having this transport header in the transport uh, payload to which an ESP header and an ESP trailer is uh, prepended and appended and then we have an uh, IP header that is attached to it. Now you can perform encryption over the transport header up to the ESP trailer part of this trailer and then also you can authenticate the details present in this particular range. Now what does this ESP header has? ESP header again has something that uniquely identifies the security association which we call as SPI. Followed by that we have a sequence number and then we have a transport header and payload information. This particular part is here. And then we have padding if necessary. We know that padding is used in order to convert a block into a multiple size which can be used for encryption. Encryption algorithm needs some fixed size of data. So for that we use padding if it is not in the block, if it is not appropriate block size. Now over here the length of uh, number of bits that have been used to pad it and information about the next header and the MAC pro HMAC protocol that is used to calculate the HMAC. Now let us uh, get into the depth of what we mean by IP security protocol in transport mode. Now this mode of operation is called as transport mode because it protects the transport header and the transport payload. We are aware that this is the transport header and the transport payload. Now the IPsec header is sandwiched between the IP and the TCP headers. Now we uh, IP and the uh, transport header between this we have the IPsec header. It could be either uh, authentication header or the ESP. Both uh, the headers are sandwiched between these two headers. Now, now we have already seen uh, said that authentication header provides only um, authentication and integration. It is not uh, concerned with providing us with confidentiality. Whereas in case of uh, uh, ESP it provides us with uh, confidentiality which is optional. Over here let us see that we use uh, something called as keyed MAC or HMAC. Uh, this helps us provide with message authentication and integrity. In both the cases this can be used. Now MAC is included in the authentication header and uh, it is included uh, within the authentication header. But when you include this MAC in the ESP head, in ESP, it is included as a, as a trailer. Okay, let us understand with the help of diagram. Now this MAC is included within the header of the authentication header. Whereas when we consider ESP, it is MAC is, HMAC is included in the trailer. Okay, HMAC is included in the trailer. ESP trailer. Now with authentication header the integrity uh, check is computed on parts of IP header such as the source and the destination head address. So you do not perform integrity check on all the parts of the authentication header. You select specific uh, um, fields which are uh, important and then perform an integrity check over them. 
Now the fields that are selected over here in this case are the source and the destination IP address. Now the integrity check is performed on the mutable parts of the header such as uh, TTL, TOS and the header checksum fields which are zeroed before the com computation of HMAC. Now the question that arises is why do we uh, convert these fields into zero before we, co we compute the HMAC. Now these are all mutable parts of the header which keeps changing. Now but these parts are not uh, zeroed during actual transmission. They are zeroed only during the uh, computation of HMAC. Now this HMAC is included in the trailer of the uh, encapsulating security payload packet. Now this, this HMAC field that is included either in uh, any of the uh, ESP or in, in authentication header field. Now we know that IPsec packet is, uh, this field in the IPsec packet is just 96 bits. Now the MAC is usually, uh, we are aware that it is of fixed size, it could be of uh, 512 bits or 128 bits or whatever. Now out of all these bits we just select the most significant 96 bits and uh, those most significant 96 bits are transmitted to the other end for verification. Now another uh, point over here is ESP does not pro provide uh, protection to any part of the IP header in the transport mode. So no protection is provided to IP header in the transport mode. So you can just check with the help of a diagram. Now IP header is just left as it is in case of ESP whereas in case of uh, authentication header it is again included within the scope of authentication. Now we have seen that uh, uh, there is a sequence number that is used. Now all the IP security headers have 32 bit field each for specifying the uh, SPI and the packet sequence number to protect against replay attack. Now also we use padding. Now padding is used in order to um, get an appropriate length which is uh, a length for the message being transmitted which is a multiple of the block size. Now why, why do we do, do this because encryption algorithms need uh, a, a message to be of fixed block size. For example, DES uses one block size, AES uses one block size and so on. Now another uh, uh, advantage of having padding is that it helps us hide the actual length of the data. Now transport versus the tunnel mode. Having understood that the transport, uh, having understood the transport mode which protects the transport header and the transport payload without much bothering about what happens to the IP header, the question is uh, how do we actually protect the IP header? We are uh, in the ESP, we need to protect the IP header. Now to protect the entire IP header, IPsec is provided with an option of tunnel mode. Now both authentication header and the ESP can employ this particular tunnel mode of operation. Now when the encryption is turned on, the ESP in the tunnel mode encrypts the inner IP header thus providing limited traffic flow confidentiality. Now because the inner IP header is encrypted, you need to have an outer IP header. You attach an extra outer IP header so that you know where to route the packet. Now inner IP header is encrypted and outer IP header will be used for routing the packet. Also we have seen the order of insertion of headers and the scope of authentication and encryption. Let us just have a recap of it. Over here in case of the authentication header usage, it is inserted in between the IP header and the transport header and the scope of authentication is the entire information that is the transport header with its payload along with the IP and the AH header. Now in case of uh, ESP header that is encapsulating uh, security payload header, 
we have this uh, packet that is received from the transport layer which contains the transport header and the transport payload. To that we are adding ESP header and the ESP trailer. Now we have already discussed that ESP trailer has an HMAC and then the then we add the IP header. Now over here we can see that we are performing encryption only on the information that is received from the upper layer that is the transport layer. And then authentication is performed on the uh, encapsulating security header up to the ESP trailer. We are not performing any of the operation on the IP header over here. Now it is not secure, IP header is not secure. Now that is what we are trying to do over here using the tunnel mode. That is trying to uh, secure the IP header. Now having understood the order of insertions of the headers and also the scope of authentication and encryption, we have seen that the most important use of IP security in tunneling mode is securing host to host and host to gateway communication. Now consider the communication between two hosts that is A and B. Both A and B are present on different networks. And both these uh, hosts are communicating with the help of internet. Now let us uh, have a look at this diagram. Over here we have A which is present in network 1 and uh, network 2 has B. Both these networks are connected with the help of internet and they need to take a path from here in order to reach to B. Let us see how this works. Now suppose that the security policy says that the packet entering the network 2 should authenticate itself to the incoming gateway. Now there is a gateway D over here and any packet that enters this particular network has to authenticate itself to the gateway D. And also then A could tunnel its packet to B inside a packet to D. Now A is wanting to send a packet to B but before that what it does is this entire packet which is uh, intended uh, for B will be uh, packed up and, and put in an envelope uh, which is addressed to, to D. Now the now now if uh, okay over here we were in this slide. Now if IPsec headers uh, le let's see the IPsec headers generated in this particular uh, scenario. Now over here we have uh, the IPsec uh, headers, this is the inner IP packet and this is the outer IP packet. We have TCP header in the payload, we have ESP over here. Now this is uh, for a host to gateway tunnel. Now from here up to gateway tunnel. Now what happens? Let us see here. Now we have a source A and the outer IP, uh, outer, uh, IP uh, header will contain a destination address D. So I am uh, first planning to send a packet to B over here in case of inner IP that is source is A and destination is B. A is in this network and B is in this network. I have encapsulated this entire stuff uh, or I have uh, uh, encrypted this entire stuff. Now what do I do? I need to have an, another IP header which will help me. Uh, transmit or route this packet to this particular network. Now I know that the source is A. So A is sending the message and where do I need to send it? I need to send it to D because at D I need to authenticate myself so that this network receives the packet which is coming from A. Now what happens in the second case where, it, where there is a gateway to gateway tunnel? Now in this gateway to gateway tunnel we know that the inner IP uh, header will have a source as a source address as A and destination address as B. Now for both the cases the inner IP address remains the same because the packet is intended to reach B from A. Now what does the outer IP address have? The outer IP address has this particular gateway C which belongs to the network A, uh, network 1 wherein A is present. And the destination over here is D, which says that D is the gateway of network 2 where host B is present. Now this is a classic example of gateway to gateway tunneling. Now the destination address in the outer IP header is D. This header is used to route the packet through the internet. 
on receipt of the packet by D, what will D do? It will strip the outer IP header. First, it will authenticate whether this uh, packet has come from the genuine source and if so, it will strip the outer IP header and then use the inner IP uh, decrypt and then uh, use the inner IP header in order to uh, reach the packet or route the packet to B. Now, what exactly happens in gateway to gateway tunneling? Now, the gateway C is responsible for providing authentication and encryption service to all the traffic that is destined to the network 2. Any traffic that flows from C to D, C is responsible for authenticating and encrypting that traffic. Now, for that what does C do? C will prepend an ESP header and another IP header to ACE packet for communication through the secure tunnel which is uh, established by C between C and D. On receipt of the packet, what does D do? D will strip out the outer IP, IP header, authenticate the source of the packet, decrypt its contents and strip off the ESP header and trailer and route the packet to B. Now this is about uh, how exactly uh, IPsec works in tunnel mode and uh, previously we had discussed how it works in transport mode. Now let us see uh, the last uh, subtopic of today's session that is IPsec when it is uh, uh, dealing with NAT. Now NAT is responsible for translating IP, uh, source IP address of the outgoing packet. Now usually the address that is uh, present is a private one which is usually a local address that is present and it is uh, valid locally. Now this address has to be substituted with the one that will be acceptable globally. Now the address that is accepted globally we are aware that it is an internet address that is accepted globally. Now what is the advantage of having NAT? Network uh, address translation or NAT also helps in what it helps in having an uh, addressing scheme or hiding an addressing internal addressing scheme that is used and makes the system more secure. It uses a global addressing scheme rather than uh, uh, referring the local address scheme. Now also there is another uh, point to be considered here that the database servers and the application servers are not directly addressable by the outside world. There is a, a translation that is required in order to convert these requests into the addresses for the server. Now the question over here is whether or why NAT and IPsec may be unable to coexist. Now we are aware that for a, any given packet, we prepend it uh, that particular packet with IPsec data or sorry IPsec header. Once we prepend this uh, with the IPsec header, it is forwarded for na uh, to the NATing device such as a firewall or something. Now how this is actually handled, let us see what happens if uh, we, we are in uh, Authentic, using authentication header in transport mode. Now in this case a packet has only one IP header. Now this IP header is the source uh, has the source address and this source address is translated after MAC computation. Now since the source address gets translated after the MAC computation, the message integrity check at the receiver will fail. How do we deal this? Now similarly, what happens in the case of ESP in a transport mode? If the IP header is not part of, compu uh, of MAC computation, there are some issues that arises. Now what are those issues? The scope of the checksum in the TCP header, which includes the source and the destination address, since the NAT modifies the source IP address, the TCP checksum will no longer be valid. Hence, the TCP checksum has to be recomputed by the NATing device to if encryption is not used. Hence, in this case, again message integrity fails and this causes the ESP MAC 
to cover the entire TCP header including the TCP checksum. The only way where NAC and NAT and ESP can coexist is the tunnel mode. In this case, the source address that gets translated is in the outer IP header. This is neither covered by the IP MAC nor does it, uh, 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 nor does it belong to the scope of the TCP checksum. Now with this information, we can understand that NAT is compatible only with the tunnel mode of operation of IP security protocol. It is not compatible with the transport mode either in the case of authentication header or the encapsulating security payload mode. Now we come to the end of this particular module session of uh, module 3 session 8 of this particular module wherein we started our discussion on um, uh, the modes of operation and also why security is required at the transport, uh, why security is required and we discussed about the IPsec, its pros and cons and what happens if security is involved in the transport and the application layer or at the application layer or just at the network layer and uh, how, what, what do we mean by security association we have discussed and various modes of operation of this particular IPsec protocol that is the AH and um, ESP header and also we have seen the compatibility of IPsec with NAT. It is just compatible only for the tunnel mode and not for the AH and the ESP mode in ESP in transport mode. Now with this, uh, let's end the session and uh, in the ninth session we will discuss another topic. Thank you. Have a good day. If in case you have any queries, you can just ping me on this uh, contact number or email ID. Thank you.